Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about 10 fantasy romance books that I read recently that I am currently obsessed with. All right guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be talking about 10 fantasy romance books that I read this year that I either rated five stars or just can't stop thinking about. So I'll be giving you a brief spoiler-free synopsis of every book and then just why I'm completely obsessed with it. So I'm so excited to talk about these books with you guys. If you're unfamiliar with my channel, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. You can also hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I post new bookish content. You can also check out my Instagram and Goodreads, both linked down below. With all that out of the way, let's talk about these books. All right, so first up we have A Court of Blood and Bindings, and this is by Lizette Marshall. Now I've talked about this book a lot on my channel and that is because I am completely obsessed with it. I loved this story. So we are following Emmeline. She is our main character. She is a 20 year old human girl living on one of the human islands. So in this world, there are human islands and then there are fae islands, but the fae kind of rule over the humans because they possess color magic. So how color magic works is the fae are able to pull on different colors to create different magic. So you can pull on red to create destruction magic. You can pull on yellow to create healing magic, but you can actually mix those colors together and create completely unique magic. Now the fae are ruled over by the fae queen and she is kind of like this evil queen that both humans and the fae are very fearful, fearful of. And then the fae queen also has a henchman known as the silent death and also everyone is just terrified of him. So one day our main character just goes to sleep. When she wakes up, her entire town is on fire. Everyone is missing and the silent death himself is just standing over her bed. So the story goes from there. Why do I love this story? It is just so, first of all, it's impossible to put down. I was pretty much hooked from the very beginning. I found the magic system very interesting and unique. And also our mailman character isn't able to use his voice. So in the beginning, he actually has to write down everything he wants to say to Emmeline. And eventually Emmeline teaches him sign language. And I've never seen a book that used that before. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And it was just such a fun book that not enough people are talking about. So please, if you like fae romances, and this does have a decent amount of spice, I highly recommend picking this book up. So this the next book, I'm not exactly sure if it's classified as fantasy romance, but this is my channel and I do what I want. So Manigold by Senlin Yu. I recently read this Dramini fanfic and I, I can't stop thinking about it. It's probably gonna be my top book of the year. It was so good. I actually have a spoiler free reading blog of me reading Manigold that I'll leave in the cards and in the description. But this story is following Hermione. So it is Hermione fanfic, essentially Draco and Hermione are like the main couple. And it's what would have happened if Voldemort won the war against Harry Potter. So in the beginning of the story, we're following Hermione and she is put into this breeding or magical breeding program where there's a shortage of magic. So Voldemort has created this program to try to have more magical children be born. So Hermione is given to Draco Malfoy and it's kind of like a Handmaid's Tale situation. And it goes from there. Honestly, I feel like it's better going in slightly blind to everything that goes on with this plot. But it was, it was so, so good. I have not been this invested in a book in a really, really long time. Um, it is over a thousand pages. It is crazy long. But honestly, I don't think there's anything you can cut out of that book and make it shorter and not take away from the story. The story is just absolutely epic. It is dark. And I think I say that like 30 times throughout that reading vlog, so sorry about that. But definitely check trigger warnings. There is graphic violence. There's like a lot of very upsetting things that happen. But I, I loved the relationship in this story. And if you're someone who follows my channel and you seem to like what I read, highly, highly recommend picking up Manigold by Sendling You. All right, so this next book is The Coven by Harper L. Woods. So I wanna start by saying this book is not gonna be for everyone. This book has tropes that are just like tailored to my reading taste that I was completely obsessed, but I totally understand that there are a lot of flaws in this book. But this story is following Willow and Willow has grown up in isolation with her mother and her younger brother because her mother escaped the coven, which is a group of witches that are running this like, almost like witch college program. 
Um, so anyway, Willow's mother ended up escaping, faked her own death, and she's been living in secret, practicing magic and teaching her daughter magic. Now, the younger brother doesn't know any of this is going on, and unfortunately, when Willow's mother passes away, the coven then finds out about Willow's existence. So they ended up sending Grey, who is a vessel, you'll find more about that in the book, um, to bring Willow to the college, which he does do. And it's Willow and Grey's story, and it is so good. So if you like student teacher, if you like forbidden romance, if you like vampire romance, you're gonna love this. I will say, it also has really good like witchy elemental vibes. Like all the different witches have different elemental powers. Um, so I really, really enjoyed it. World building and writing probably could use a little bit more. I feel like there are a lot of unanswered questions, but the ending of this book, chef's kiss. I am so excited to continue with this series. So if you're looking for a witchy fantasy romance that has all of those like forbidden romance tropes, definitely pick up The Coven by Harper L. Woods. And next up is Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. So if you are unfamiliar with what this story is about, it is a new adult fantasy romance and we are following Violet. At the start of the story, we find out that Violet has a chronic illness. I'm not sure if they ever say exactly what it is, but she's very easily breakable, which is why she wants to become a scribe and has been studying to become a scribe. However, her mother is a very high up general in this like dragon army and says, no daughter of mine is going to be a scribe. You are going to join the dragon riders. So Violet essentially at the start of our story is going into this dragon college program and it's very high stakes. Most of the people that try out for this dragon program end up dying very early on into the program. And if she is able to stay alive long enough, she will bond with the dragon and learn how to fly said dragon in order to go to war eventually to protect their kingdom. So we are following Violet throughout this journey and there's also a romance that goes on. And I thoroughly enjoyed this book. I honestly had trouble putting this book down. I thought the pacing was perfect non-stop action. It really reminded me of reading a book when I was like 15 or 16, like Hunger Games and Divergent, where like you just can't stop reading. And that's how I felt while reading this book. Now, is it perfect? By no means. I also am not sure if it deserves quite the amount of hype it's getting. And I am someone who absolutely loves this book. Is this the next Akatar? I do not think so. However, it's great on its own. I don't think it needs to be compared to Akatar. So this book has a romance and I was absolutely obsessed with the romance. I was obsessed with our main character, Violet. I think she is a very fleshed out character. It is written very young. I feel like this is tailored towards a younger audience. There is a point in this book where one of the characters says he's 23 and I actually gasped because up until that point, I was picturing them all as like 16 and 17 year olds. It is stated earlier their ages. I just forgot as the story was going on just because even the writing just seems tailored towards a younger audience. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing by any means. It just made the book easier to read. And I was more immersed into the world and I, I really, really enjoyed it. So definitely if you want action, you want slow burn, you want like just kiss already moments, I would definitely give this book a shot. Just I wouldn't compare it to Akatar and FBAA and things of that nature because this is its own separate thing. And next up, we have A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. So this is also gonna be one of my top books of the year. The story is so unique. And if you're looking for a fantasy romance that doesn't involve Faye, this is probably my top recommendation. So we are following Matic and Yven. Matic is the prince of the barbarian tribe. And early on into the story, his parents end up being killed. So Matic wants revenge and he gets a tip that the person responsible for the death of his parents is Yven, the princess of another kingdom. So he goes to try to kill her and instead Yven's like, hey, we can probably help each other out here. Why don't we like get married, combine our kingdoms and we can go kill my father. And at first Matic is like very against this and then he thinks about it and he's like, well, I might as well have this girl captive. She'll have my kids, it'll be, it'll be good. So the story pretty much goes from there. I didn't do a great job explaining the synopsis, but just trust me, it's really good. So Yvette and Maddox's relationship is so enemies to lovers, but in the best way. And it's, I loved Yvette as a character. So Yvette has something that prevents her from being able to do a lot of things that Maddox people are able to do. 
but she finds a way around it and she doesn't let those things stop her. She is unbelievably intelligent and really uses her cunning in a way that is very impressive as you read the story. And I also love Maddox as a character because he really just wants what's best for his people and he tries to be this like very hard barbarian but when you see him with Aven, he does really get a soft spot for her. And it's just, it's so much fun. Highly recommend checking this book out. Um, it came out a long time ago, but I actually think the third book in this series is going to be released this year. So that's very exciting. But yeah, one of my absolute favorite reads of the year. All right, and next up is my number one young adult fantasy romance of all time. We have The Ballad of Never After by Stephanie Garber. So this is the sequel to Once Upon a Broken Heart. Both books are fantastic. I just prefer this one a little bit more. So this is following Evangeline Fox, and she is a girl that is madly in love with her friend, but he is about to marry her stepsister. So Evangeline is just absolutely distraught. So she ends up asking a fate for a favor. Now in this world, it is known you do not make deals with fates. It always ends badly, but Evangeline is so desperate, she ends up making a deal with Jax, the Prince of Broken Hearts. Now, it is known that Jax's kiss is deadly. However, Jax tells Evangeline that if she will kiss three men of his choosing, then he will stop the wedding of her true love. So the story goes from there, and oh my goodness, I can't even like begin to explain how much I love this series. Jax is just, he seems very aloof, but he's also very charismatic. And he just, it's the perfect like slow bird, butterflies, obsessed. I, I love this series so, so much. And it also, the entire world has a very like magical fairy tale quality that you just feel so immersed as you're reading. And I absolutely loved it. I don't have a single criticism about this series. So if you have not picked up The Ballad of Never After, definitely do so. The next book, I believe is coming out in September or October, A Curse of True Love. And the ending of this book was like, I was, I was not okay. So I cannot wait for that next book to come out. So highly recommend definitely pick this book up. And this next book is technically monster romance, but it kind of has like a fantasy vibe and I absolutely loved it. So we have Soul Eater and this is by Lily Main. So this is an MM monster romance. It's also post-apocalyptic. So we are following Danny and at the start of our story, he has just joined the military or he's been in the military for like six months. And his team is trying to capture Win the Soul Eater, who is this terrible monster that every few years or so he shows up, kills a bunch of humans and just leaves them as dried out husks. So Danny and his team go to capture Win and Danny just can't bring himself to try to shoot this monster. So he ends up blacking out, and when he wakes up, he finds out he is the sole survivor of this attack against Wynn, and they have somehow captured the monster. So the story kind of goes from there, and I loved Danny and Wynn's relationship. Oh my goodness, it is so cute. So I listened to this via audio, and at first I didn't love it, only because Danny has a very strong Southern accent, but by the end, I love Danny so much, and Wynn is just, he's like the perfect monster. So Wynn and Danny, as they're like traveling together, which does eventually happen in the story, they kind of find out a little bit more about each other. And it was just so sweet to see Danny find acceptance and love from this monster when all of the humans in his life, other than his mother, have really let him down. And I loved this story. So this is my favorite monster romance. Thank you so much, Jen, from the Book Refuge for recommending it to me. Um, and I highly recommend, if you are new to monster romance or want to give it a shot, definitely pick this up. And next up, we have Serpent and the Wings of Night, and this is by Carissa Broadbent. So this book is also unbelievably popular. If you're unfamiliar with the story, we are following Oria. Oria is this human girl that is living in a vampiric kingdom. When she was very young, she was found by the king of the vampires. He determined she was an orphan. So he brought her back to his palace and raised her as his adopted daughter. Now, when Oria comes of age, she decides to enter into this very dangerous tournament in order to be granted a wish by the goddess Nyaxia. So when she gets into this tournament, she ends up having to align herself with someone from an enemy kingdom. And the story kind of goes from there. So I thoroughly enjoyed this book. However, it was not at all what I expected. So this is very much just following Oria as she goes through all of these very dangerous trials. And there is a romance, but personally, I feel like the romance is not very much at the forefront of this book. I did enjoy the romance. There was just a lot of other stuff going on. So I loved it. But if you're going into this thinking it is similar to A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I've seen that comparison in a lot of places, 
I disagree. I think this much more feels like Hunger Games vibes. Um, and it's really just Aurea trying to survive. And the romance happens towards the end of the book. Now, I have not read the sequel. The sequel might be way more romance heavy. Um, and I'm very excited to read the sequel. I will be reading the sequel in August when the audiobook drops. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Just definitely know going in that it's very much vampire Hunger Games with a little bit of romance thrown in there. And next up, we have Lady of Darkness, and this is by Melissa K. Rohirsch. I've only read this first book, but the series is now completed. I believe it's five different books. But this is a faith fantasy romance that was so engaging, and I just really enjoyed it. And at the time I read it, I feel like not a lot of people were talking about it. Um, it is getting a little bit more popular now, which is amazing. So this story is following Scarlet, and she is one of the three daughters that are being brought up by the Assassin Lord. So she is very good at killing, and so are her sisters. And unfortunately, Scarlet does something that angers the Assassin Lord. So she is put into the house of this noble family, and she's pretty much cut off from everyone until she learns how to behave. So the Assassin Lord gives her a job of killing this person, and if she's able to do this, she will be able to get revenge on the Fire Prince, and the story goes from there. So this felt very much like From Blood and Ash, but with a little bit more like action and politics going on. There's also a subplot of these children that are going missing that you have to uncover what is happening. And I really, really liked this. I loved the romance. It once again also had like enemies to lovers and secrets. It, it was so good. It was just really, really good. So the one thing I will say is I listened to this via audio. I wasn't a huge fan of the audio narrator, but I also listen at three times speed. So if you listen slower, it's probably a little bit more enjoyable. But overall, I really enjoyed this and can't wait to continue with the series. And last up is Between Wrath and Mercy by Jess Wisecup. So this is following Emmeline, and she is trapped in this loveless marriage. However, she has a daughter, and her daughter is her whole world. Unfortunately, her daughter ends up being kidnapped, so Emmeline has to turn to the Bloody Prince, who she actually has a history with, in order to help find her daughter. So it is these two people, Emmeline and the Bloody Prince, trying to find her daughter while also trying to discover the motivations for her daughter being taken. And if you want pining, you get it in spades with this book. Oh my gosh, the prince, like I said, the prince and Emmeline have quite a history. And he pretty much spends 80% of this book just begging forgiveness, and I was completely here for it. <laughs> I loved it. I also love seeing more mature characters. I feel like most fantasy romance books, um, the characters are either younger 20s or late teens. This actually has mature characters and they make mature decisions, which was great. It was amazing reading about a heroine who actually takes time to think about her choices instead of being completely impulsive, which I feel like also happens a lot with fantasy romance. So I very much enjoyed this. The ending is insane. Um, it was, I was not expecting it at all. I'm normally pretty good at like picking out twists. Did not see this ending coming, so I cannot wait to read the sequel. I will definitely be reading the sequel at some point over the summer. All right, guys, those are 10 fantasy romance books I am currently obsessed with. Please let me know down in the comments below if you read any of the book I mentioned, or if you have another fantasy romance that you absolutely love that you read this year. And I said this already, I post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday, and if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. I will see you all next week. Bye!